Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Emmanuel. We're so glad that you're here. Oh, yeah, we're already getting standing. Hey, if we can all together, let's just give every mother in the room a big round of applause. How thankful are you for the mothers in this room right now? We're nothing without you. We're not here without you. And we want to honor you mothers today. Actually, if you would, if you have the mother of your child next to you, your mother, or there's a mother by you, just give them a big, nice squeeze. Can you, can you give them a hug? I mean, if you need to get a smooch in, that's fine too. If, you know, she's not by you, just maybe hug somebody random, I guess. You can. Well, maybe not, but it's all right. Good deal. Well, now that I got all the warm and fuzzies going in me, this is the portion of the service where we lift up a few songs to an amazing God that we have. So we'd love to invite you to do that and sing out an old favorite. Here we go. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. One, two, three, hey! Can we get those hands together? Everybody in the building, let's lift it up, make a joyful noise. Here we go. Twas grace that time. today.
You have my attention, Lord. So speak. You have my attention. You have my attention. You have my attention, Lord. What's up, Emmanuel? My name is Aaron Beasley, and I'm the student ministries director. And by the way, uh, Danny's going to come up here. He's going to bring a new series starting this week called Celebrate. But there's something that we want to celebrate right now. And if you're a mom, a stepmom, you know, if you're a grandma in this place or a motherly figure, let's just give it up for them, all right? Come on. Oh, that's terrible, 1115. 915 was louder than you. Oh, there we go. That's better. That's better. That's better. Yeah, we just want to celebrate, and we also want to celebrate something else here at Emmanuel, and it's called the Connection Card. We celebrate this all the time, the Connection Card. If you're a first-time guest with us, we're so glad that you're here. We ask that you fill this Connection Card out, drop it off in the offering bucket as it is passed, so that we can get you more information about our church. And if you're a second-time guest, we're so glad that you came back. We ask that you fill this out again, drop it off in the offering bucket, and we'll get you a free Chick-fil-A milkshake coupon that's right, a free Chick-fil-A milkshake coupon. Well, speaking of celebrating, doesn't our worship team just do an absolutely awesome job every week? They're awesome. They're great. Well, we would love for you to come celebrate with us this Friday night for a night of worship, May 13th. We're going to have a night of worship. It starts at 7 p.m. right here at the Greenwood campus. All of the campuses are going to be invited, and so this is a great opportunity for you to have fun. Uh, with our, our community, our church, and to also worship our awesome God. So once again, it's this Friday night, May 13th at 7 p.m. You can come a little bit earlier if you'd like, and we'd love to worship with you. Well, maybe you received Christ recently, or maybe you've been a Christ follower uh, for a little bit now, but you haven't taken that next step of baptism, and maybe you feel like baptism is your next step. 
Well, we have a baptism service coming up May 21st and 22nd, and we would love for you to be a part of that. And so if you feel that that's your next step, you can register by going to eclife.org and click on Next Steps. And we just want to let you know that uh, this is a great opportunity for you to also invite your friends and your family and your neighbors and coworkers to this service because it's awesome to hear how God is moving here at Emmanuel and to hear people's stories of life change. Lastly, we just want to say that if you give to this church, we want to celebrate you because you're making a huge difference. Just in the month of April, we had 110 people receive Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Just in the month of April. That's awesome. And so also, since the beginning of the year, we've had 418 people receive Christ at this church. Isn't that awesome? Also, in the month of April, we are able to do a bunch of family ministries events to help families grow close, closer, closer together and also grow, uh, grow closer together with God. And so we just want to let you know that if you give to this church, you help create these environments. You help us reach families. You help us go out into the world and make a difference. And so on the screens are easy ways for you to give or also in your handouts. It, it tells you how you can do that. And we just want to say that if you give, you partner with us. You partner with this church and you make a huge difference. You are making an impact. And we want to say thank you and celebrate that. And so as the offering team comes forward, will you join with me in prayer as we pray for our offering? God, you are awesome. Lord, you are the reason why we come here every single week and celebrate because of what Jesus did for us. And Lord, I pray for anybody in this place today that feels like God doesn't love them or they're too far gone. I pray that Jesus, you will help them show you and show them how much you love them how much you care about them, and how your grace and mercy can cover all of us. And so we love you, we praise you, we use this offering for your glory. Thank you, Lord, and we celebrate you today. Thank you for moms, thank you for the gift of life. We love you in Jesus' name, amen. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains My orphan heart was given a name My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance When death was arrested and my life began Will you stand and sing these words with us? Oh, your grace so free Washes over me You have made me new Now life begins with you Released Released from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more My shame was a ransom me faithfully bore He canceled my debt and he called me his friend
Our Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with the freedom in him. And that's when death was arrested and my life began. And that's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace, oh, your grace, so. What is up, Emmanuel? How you feeling today? Pretty good? You ought to be. That was exciting. We are starting a brand new series today called Celebrate. And I want to begin with a really quick, quick, simple question. It's this real question right here. Very, very simple. When was the last time that you celebrated? And some of you are saying, we, we just did just now. We celebrated moms. And, and uh, maybe it was. But when was the last time you had a celebration other than what we just did right there? Was it last month? Was it last week? Was it last night? Uh, the other day, my son came home, have middle, middle child, is 12 years old, and he said, Dad, you know, um, I, I was out of town, so I missed his race, and he runs the mile. And he said, Dad, I beat my record by 20 seconds. You know, I ran a 630 mile. I thought, man, that's so awesome. And then he said this, can we go celebrate? And usually what that means is we go out and get an ice cream cone or whatever. He loves to celebrate. Anybody else like to celebrate? Yeah, I like to celebrate. Celebration is fun. And so we didn't go out that night, but... My other son got invited to go watch the, the Avengers movie, not the Avengers, but Captain America, uh, Civil War. Yeah, yeah. So my wife said, well, why don't you take Bo out to watch uh, the movie as a celebration for his, uh, for his mile? You know, he would love that. He loves that, those types of movies. So, so we did. We went, we went out on Friday night to watch the movie. And uh, as you know, I like to do, I always, I always like to spoil movies. How many of you haven't seen it yet? You haven't seen it yet. Would you like to know what happens? Well, what happens is, is 
I won't do that. I won't do that. I did that one time. Man, I caught some wrath from everybody. So I don't do that anymore. I don't even mess with that. Uh, but anyway, if you like explosions and you bullets and all kinds of cool effects, this movie is for you. It's like three bad words in it. So if you don't like bad words, you know, just you close your ears. But anyway, um, so it's awesome. We're sitting there with my son. We're just having, you know, daddy son time, watching this, kind of celebrating his, his time. And, and man, it was a great movie. And, and I didn't know this, but I guess there's like a subculture of, of superhero fans. I didn't know that. I, and, you know, and so inside the movie, like, you know, they, it was really, there were like, there was feedback. For, you know, I hadn't heard this in a while. Like people were like saying things back to the screen. And it was like, oh, this is interesting. And then after the movie was over, you know, the, the place kind of erupted in this, this celebration. Maybe you were there Friday night. I don't know. It's like, yeah, woo! And I'm looking around like, what, how, what's going on? And, and maybe I just haven't been to the movies in a while. But, uh, I, but again, then again, maybe it's just it was that good of a movie. But there was this spontaneous celebration because the movie was so awesome. So now everybody's going to go see it, right, this afternoon? See that? I'll see how that works. No, I'm not, maybe not. Anyway, celebration. Celebration is this thing that follows uh, a positive event, isn't it? That's how it works. Celebration is this, this thing that, that comes after something cool happens, something excellent happens, like, you know, someone gets engaged or someone gets married or someone has a baby or someone, you know, has a birthday or something really cool happens, like someone gets a raise or they get a job or they graduate, you know, middle school or high school or college or something like that. And then in response to that, we have some sort of celebration. Often it involves, you know, uh, some sort of gathering together, family or friends, and there's, you know, food and there's drinks and there's other, these other things that maybe there's some singing. Maybe somebody says a few words at a celebration of some sort. There's all kinds of things that happen at celebrations. And oftentimes there's, there's also this, this feeling of exuberance or this fullness of joy, right? And, and the people get excited. Did, did, did you see the way the last NCAA championship tournament game ended? It was, un- anybody see that? I didn't get a chance to actually watch the game, but I watched the last, you know, couple of minutes. North Carolina tied the game with an acrobatic three-point shot with a few seconds left, and it was going to go into overtime, and Michael Jordan is in the crowd going, Rah! right? And of course, I love that part because MJ's my man, right? So, but then Villanova comes down, and they hit a last-second buzzer-beater shot to win the game. Now, that rarely happens in an ordinary game, let alone the NCAA National Championship game. And after the guy on Villanova, hit the shot, there was this spontaneous, you know, explosion of emotion, and they did this, this dog pile tackle. Do you remember this? Did you see this? Anybody watch this? And there was this huge celebration, right? And so oftentimes, celebration is filled with joy, and everybody's happy, and they're smiling, and it follows a positive event. And I believe, I believe that because celebration is, is such an incredible thing, and it's so exhilarating, and it literally fills our cup up sometimes with just joy and happiness, For that purpose alone, I believe that celebration is a gift. It's something that God has woven into the human experience as a gift to you and as a gift to me. And here's why I believe that with all my heart, because life can get you down. Life has a way of getting you down, doesn't it? If it's not the daily grind of responsibilities and pressure, it's a sickness that comes to a loved one, that's stealing away their health. It's the distancing of one spouse towards another, and a marriage grows cold. It's a child that you've tried to raise right, but ends up making a bunch of wrong choices. Isn't it amazing how life just can just hammer at you and get you down? Circumstances of life. I'm not even talking about the choices that we make that make it worse. Anybody ever make a choice that's made it even worse? I'm not even talking, that's another sermon for another day. I'm just talking about the stuff that you cannot control that happens to you. It's like, oh, man. Life can get you down. If there's anybody who is more familiar or with, with negative circumstances in the Bible, it's a guy named Job. He had some negative circumstances come down upon him. If you've, anybody read the book of Job? It's an incredible book. In one day, it's crazy. In one day, Job lost seven sons. He lost three daughters, 7,000 camels. Now, back in these days, when you had animals, you were, that was the sign of wealth. You were an incredibly wealthy person. He lost all 7,000 camels. He lost 3,000, I'm sorry, sheep, sorry, 3,000 camels. (laughs) Get that right. 500 yoke of oxen and 500 donkeys. He lost everything. 
His wife somehow miraculously survived, but she turned around and said to him, Job, you should just curse God and die. It's pretty encouraging words from your spouse, don't you think? (laughs) At one point, Job says, cursed is the day I was born. In chapter 14, verse 1, he says this, how frail is humanity, how short is life, and how full of what? Say it with me. Trouble. He was well acquainted with grief. He, he experienced unparalleled difficulty in his life. Life can get you down. Things happen that, that, that just, it's like, oh, cause tremendous pain. I have a friend who's, whose husband is battling cancer, and the cancer is winning. And I'm in a front row seat watching the whole thing go down. It's so hard. It's so difficult. Life can be discouraging. Life can get you. And so celebration is one way that God tends to pick us back up and fill our cup back up with joy. You know, recently I, I was reading a book called Celebration of Discipline. It's a book about spiritual growth and becoming like Christ and practices that you need to put into your life. If you're, ever, if you're interested in spiritual growth, this is a must read. In the last chapter, it's called uh, basically celebrating celebration. And he talks about how important celebration is in our life. And, and Foster says this celebration brings joy into our life. And joy makes us, say it with me, makes us strong. That's why we need joy in our life. That's why we need celebration in our life, because celebration brings joy into our life, and joy makes us strong. Last week, I was talking about a guy named Paul, who's a big dog in the, in the, Old Test- in the New Testament, and God tapped him on the shoulder, <laughs> actually knocked him off his horse, and said, you're going you're gonna to preach the gospel, and you're going to take this message of grace to a world that needs to hear it, and, and along the way, you're going to suffer, and suffer he did. Five times, he was, he was whipped with, with a rope. He was, he was uh, beaten with a rod three times. He was shipwrecked three times. They pelted him with stones until he was almost dead. He was without a home many nights. He was without uh, warmth many nights, without food. He suffered while he preached the gospel to a world that needed to hear it. But yet, when he was in jail, when he was locked up for preaching this message, he wrote these words in Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord. How often? Always. All the time. Even when you're in jail, I want you to rejoice in the Lord. And again, I'm going to repeat myself. Here's what I want you to do. Rejoice. I want you to celebrate. I want you to be positive. He's, this is the guy that wrote, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You ever wonder where that came from, Philippians 4.13? It came from Paul. He's the guy that said, listen, you can find joy in any situation. How did he do that? He was celebrating. One time he was locked up in Acts chapter 16. It says that he was singing hymns to God while he was in jail. <laughs> Would you ever sing hymns? Would you ever sing praises to God while you were locked up in jail? You know what I'd be doing? I'd be like, give me my phone call. This is not right. The injustice of it all, and who's in charge, and I want to see a lawyer, and get me out of here, and you know, I wouldn't be like, you know, singing praise songs to Jesus, I'd be mad, right? Not Paul, he's singing, he's singing hymns in jail. He's an incredibly positive person. How is that possible? He was a person who was rejoicing and celebrating God. I, I love the book of Nehemiah, especially if you, you know, because it's a, it's a book with intense leadership principles in it. And it's fantastic. And if you're a leader, you really need to spend time in Nehemiah. But Nehemiah basically has to lead the nation to rebuild the walls around Jerusalem. He does it in 52 days with with the help of all of the Israelites. 52 days they rebuild the walls around Jerusalem. After the end, after the walls are rebuilt, he he calls together uh, all the people for a celebration. And he asks the prophet uh, Ezra, the scribe Ezra, to get up and read the, the Pentateuch, which is the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And Ezra gets up and he's reading the, the words of Moses and all the people are there to celebrate and all of a sudden the people become convicted of their sin because they realize they haven't been following the words of Moses and so they start to cry and they start to weep and so Nehemiah steps in and calls a time out he says whoa (laughs) this is supposed to be a celebration like we just finished the walls I'm paraphrasing here but this is basically what he's saying this is this is the time to celebrate there's going to be a time later to say sorry for your sins there's going to be time later to confess your sins and cry about how bad you are but not right now and in Nehemiah chapter eight verse 10 listen to what he says don't be dejected or sad because you stink (laughs) because you're a sinners like we'll get to that later but here's what I want you to do in this moment right now for the joy of the Lord is your strength I want you to celebrate right now 
Because God's joy in you makes you strong. See, celebration brings joy into our life, and joy makes us strong. Does anybody need strength for their life today? I think we all do. Because life can get you down. And that's where celebration is a gift. It's a gift to me. It's a gift to you. And so we celebrate at our house. We don't do it all the time, but we try to. Even when my son breaks his record for 20, se- in 20 seconds. Like, oh, it's a time to celebrate. We celebrate this, celebrate that. To fill our lives with joy. This was such a serious issue for God and, 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 and his people in the Old Testament that he actually scheduled celebrations into their year. He had these festivals, these parties, these seven-day parties that he, he basically said, you're going to do it here, 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 and here. I'll just, I'll just list a few of them. There was the Feast of Tabernacles. That was a big seven-day festival. Then there was the Feast of First Fruits. Then there was the Feast of Weeks. Then there was the Feast of Trumpets. And then there was the big dog party of all of them. Okay, this is the big one. The big seven-day festival was called the Passover. And they did all of these parties throughout the year so that they could celebrate. Now, what is a celebration? It's, it's something that results from something positive that took place, right? Something incredible happened, and so there's this reaction, there's this response. And so Passover is no different. What's the Passover? Well, the Passover was this incredible story. It's in the book of Exodus where the Egyptians were holding the Israelites in bondage to, uh, as slaves for 400 years. And finally, God said, enough is enough because the people were praying and saying, we want to be free, we want to be free. So God finally answers, and he brings down ten plagues upon Pharaoh and all of Egypt to try to set them free. They go through nine, and Pharaoh says no, and they finally get to the tenth one. The tenth one is the worst one of all. God decides to send his death angel. Did you know God had a death angel? It's pretty scary stuff. I hope he never sends the death angel down to our house. You know, but he sends this death angel down to Pharaoh and all of Egypt. And the death angel's job is to kill every firstborn male in every single home. Pretty scary stuff. And he tells, uh, he tells Moses and all the Israelites, in order for, for, for you to avoid the death of your firstborn, here's what you have to do. You have to take a one-year-old male lamb and you have to slaughter it and then you have to eat it a certain way. And so there was instructions for that and all that. But here's what I want you to do with some of the blood. I want you to take some of the blood of that first spotless lamb. Does that ring a bell? You have to take a one-year-old spotless lamb without any imperfections, take some of its blood, and I want you to wipe it over the doorpost of your house, the doorway, right above top. And when my death angel comes down to that area, when my death angel sees the blood of the lamb, does that ring a bell? When he sees the blood of the lamb, what he's going to do is he's going to pass over your house, and he will not kill the firstborn son in your home. Did you know that that's what Passover meant? And so the Israelites did. Every home in Israel, they killed a one-year-old spotless lamb. They took some of the blood. They put it over their doorposts. And the death angel passed over every home of Israel. But not so for the Egyptians. And that night, every firstborn son in Egypt died. And Pharaoh finally said, get out of here. I'm done. You can go. And so Passover not only helped the Israelites to remember the event that the death angel passed over their house, it also represented freedom. And it reminded them of God's power to deliver them out of bondage. So here's what God said. Every year for a seven-day period, in fact, we we just celebrated, Jews just celebrated Passover last month in April. Every year for the rest of your life, take seven days and celebrate. Because here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna be reminded of the great things I've done for you, and you're going to be filled with joy, and the joy of the Lord will be your strength. God is interested in your joy. Are you figuring that out? Yes or no? Are you interested? I mean, did you know that God wants you to be joyful? <laughs> like that's his, one of his prerogatives, one of the plans he has for you is to fill you with joy? Let me take this a step further. God just doesn't want you to be joyful. He actually wants to take his joy and put his joy in you. He doesn't want you to just, you know, kind of create some of your own joy. He wants to share the joy that's in his life with you. Did you know that God is the most joyful being in the universe? Many of us think of God as maybe he's sad, maybe he's glum, maybe he cries all the time. Maybe he's weepy. That'd be terrible. I wouldn't want to have a weepy, gloomy, sad God, would you? That'd make me sad. (laughs) I'd be crying all the time. If God's crying, I I need to to be crying, right? 
God is the most joyful being in the universe. Listen to what Dallas Willard said. Years ago, I read this book, The Divine Conspiracy. I love it. Dallas is a, was a philosophy professor at Southern University of Southern California. He's now passed on. There's not a pastor in America that doesn't have two or three books of Dallas Willard in his library. That's how influential he was. Listen to what he wrote about God. Undoubtedly, he is the most joyous being in the universe. The abundance of his love and generosity is inseparable from his infinite joy. All of the good and beautiful things from which we occasionally drink, tiny little droplets of soul exhilarating joy, God continuously experiences in all their breath and depth and richness. He continues, God is simply one great, inexhaustible, and eternal experience of all that is good and true and beautiful and right. Have you ever had this experience before where you're looking up at the stars and and there's no, it's a very clear night and and, and there's no lights from the streets or anything like that and you're looking up and you're going, oh, wow, that's unbelievable. You ever had that experience? And you're just kind of taken? Or maybe it's a sunrise. You wake up and and, and you look out the window and you're, oh, Look at this. Did you see the sunrise Saturday morning? Anybody up that early? It was unbelievable. I was texting my friends. Look at the sun. Look at the sun. Anybody ever been out west? I haven't. I haven't seen the Grand Canyon. But as any, I know some of you have. You've driven out there in a Winnebago. I know. Some of you like to do that stuff. <laughs> You've seen the Grand Canyon, and you went, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. And it's like your breath gets taken away. You ever had that experience? God has that experience 24-7 because he gets to see it all. There's never a moment in God's life where he is not beholding what is the most beautiful and excellent things on this earth. Picture that. We get to drink little tiny droplets of, of that stuff, and God gets to drink from it every second of every day. He's the most joyous being in the universe. And with that being said, Let me piggyback that with something Jesus said, John 15. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you, so that your joy may be half empty, half a cup, no, brimming over, right? That the goodness of God and the joy of God is overflowing. It's bubbling up and it's falling over the cup. And guess what? It's getting on everybody else. (laughs) It's spilling on people, on their shoes and their pants and everything. It's a mess. It's a good mess. That's God's plan. Just to take his joy and he wants to put it in your life. Lives. How does he do that? Well, w- one way, one way is through celebration. celebration. That's why he commands these, these celebrations. I want you to celebrate here and here and here and here so that my joy can fill you so that, so that you can be, have, have strength for life. The problem is we forget. We forget all the good things that God has done. Listen to the psalmist, Psalm 103. Tell me if this isn't you or me. I know it's me, but tell me if this isn't you. Let all that I am, you know, praise the Lord. In other words, let me celebrate God. All that I have, my whole soul, my heart, mind, soul, and strength, let it praise God. And and then he says this on the back end. However, may I never, say with me, forget all of the good things he has done for me. See, that's the problem, isn't it? I forget And when I forget all of the good things that God has done for me, all the times he's forgiven me, all the times he's shown me grace and mercy, all the times he's come through for me and delivered me, all the times he's protected me in my stupidity and ridiculousness, all the times he's put up with me, when I forget about all the good things that he's done for me, I fail and you fail to praise the Lord. See, here's why. Because because celebration is a response. How can I celebrate if all I'm focused on is all the negative things in my life and all the things I don't have? Anybody? You agree with me? See, some of you, some of you know people like that. They only focus on what they don't have and what's going wrong in their life. Am I right? Anybody have a middle school student? <laughs> middle school students, I love you, but this, you know, this is a time in your life where it's very easy to just focus on what you don't have because so-and-so's got an iPhone 6 and you don't or whatever. And so it's all about what you don't have and what everybody else has and all the bad things that are happening in your life. And look, we all go through that phase. We all go through that phase. Here's why it's so easy for you to do that, because it doesn't take any work. It doesn't take any work. Now, some of us adults, we've got stuck in middle school. We, we, we're stuck in middle school. 
We are. We are. I mean, you, I mean let's, have, let's have a moment here, adult to adult, right? right? Just, just like me and you, right? <clears throat> you ask somebody how they're doing, and the average person says, well, not good. See? And then they go into it. Am I, am I right? Their whole mind and heart is focused on what went wrong and what the problems are. Now listen, everybody's got stuff going wrong and everybody's got problems. Am I right? See, if you ask me, hey, Danny, how's it going? <laughs> See, here's what I could do. I say, well, you really want to know? Come on in. You're not going to believe this one. Let me tell you what so-and-so did. I got another one after that and another one after that. I could tell you some stuff that's going on right now that after I was done telling you, first of all, you would wish you had never asked. <laughs> but if you, got, if you were, had enough patience to listen, you would, you would say, we need to call a prayer meeting for our pastor. <laughs> like, we, ha, we need to help you. See, I could do that because everybody's got stuff going on. It, it, it takes no work for you and I to focus on what we don't have and what's going wrong in our life. See, but, but when we do that, we're not praising God. We're, we're forgetting all of the wonderful things, all the good things that he has done for me. And when we forget about all that stuff, there's no, there's no celebration. And when there's no celebration, there's no joy. And when there is no joy, there is no strength. And that's why most people are just scraping by. You are scraping by surviving one day after the next. That's not God's plan for you. Why is that happening? Because you're so focused on what you don't have and what's going wrong. Instead of getting back, God, what have you done for me? You've done this and this and this and this and this, and because of that, I will praise you. Listen, this is why God put celebration in the schedule for his people, because <laughs> he knew that they would forget about all the, the plagues and how he delivered them and the Red Sea. I mean, they, they, forgot about the, they forgot about the Red Sea. They walked through on dry ground, and then God closed it up on the Egyptians when they were trying to follow. They forgot. Guess what? You and I are the same way. God does something amazing. We forget. <laughs> Start complaining, oh, this food stinks, it's terrible, we don't have any place to sleep, where's the water, you know, moaning and groaning. It's probably Moses' fault. <laughs> That's what they did. You and I are no different. Because we forget, we forget. And so what does God do to help us? You know what he does? He gives us special days. He gives us special days. Today's Mother's Day. He, it's on the calendar. Because we forget moms. We forget how freaking awesome moms are. We do. We do. We do. We, we forget. So there's a day on the calendar. Why are moms so awesome? Well, something happened. Remember, celebration is a response to something wonderful that happened. Guess what happened? You. You happened. Like you, here, you wouldn't be here without your mama. No existence for you. You don't exist. Scratch you out. You're not here without your mom. Yeah, I've seen how that all works. I was up, I was there three times. I was there. I saw it. I saw my wife push out those babies, and each time I went, whoa! <laughs> that shouldn't happen. That doesn't work. I don't know. How's that? How is that happening? <laughs> listen, if you pushed out one of those things, listen, much respect, <laughs> much, much respect, okay? Something happened. Now, now I know some of you did C-sections and all that stuff. Hey, 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 much respect. Some of you did the whole adoption thing. Whoa, much respect, okay? Listen, mom, something happened. You, we happened. And because we happened, we celebrate you today. And it wasn't just that you, you gave birth to us, but, you know, then after that, you had to do everything else. <laughs> Clean us up, fix us, take care of us, guide us, teach us, you know, model for us, guide, you know, do all these different things, protect us, and on and on. Here, here, here's what I know about moms. Moms, they're different than dads. They're different. They, they just are very, very different. Let me give you an example. Moms do whatever it takes. I just, I, just, I just know this. There's something in you, moms, that's just like, whatever needs to be done, you are doing it, right? So, so, and dads, we're just not that way, you know? 
like when I was, when I was 12, I was running to first base. I was a baseball player, and, and, and I'm running down, and I'm trying to beat a single or whatever, and I step on first base, and I twist my ankle, and I, I crack my foot. I was about 12 years old. And I had a paper route, which required a lot of walking. In New York, I had, I don't know, 35 houses on my route, and I had to walk each day, each morning. It was New York Daily News every, every morning at 5.30. It was, it was, a, it was a, a, deal, a thing. But you can't walk when you have a cast. So, of course, here's, here's moms. Moms do whatever it takes. My mom got up for five weeks and delivered my papers. And not only did she deliver my papers every single morning at 5.30, she also went collecting because you have to, they, they don't write the check and your money comes in the mail. You've got to go get the money. And then people are not home and you've got to circle back. And it's, it's hard work. She did that for five weeks. Then she gave me the money. The profit. She did all the work. It's like, that's what moms do. You, you know what I'd have done if, if I was, if, if, if that was my kid? I'd have been like, dude, you broke your foot. I guess you're losing your job. <laughs> Man, life happens. I mean, it sucks to be you right now. I mean... <laughs> I got a job. I'm not delivering your papers. Are you, are, you, are you smoking something? I am not delivering your papers. Like, but mom, see, that's where moms and dads are different. Moms, listen, you moms deserve to be celebrated because you will do any, you will do whatever it takes. That's just true. Am I right, moms? Am I right? Man, you are awesome. Here's what else I know about you moms. You need to be celebrated because you need some strength because you're worn out. You're worn out. And some of that is self-inflicted because, you, again, you do whatever it takes, okay? So, but that's okay. That's okay. But you are tired and you are worn out and you, you fill in gaps and you're protecting and you go the extra mile and you're tired and you're stressed. And then you have this whole other thing going on, which I don't think I'll ever understand, which is after you do everything that it takes to, for your kids and try to keep the family together and pay the finances or whatever it is that you, you know, you're trying to carry in all these different places, on top of all of that, you're carrying around all this ridiculous guilt. It's just like everywhere. It's all over you. It's like, oh, you know, I'm just not doing enough. <laughs> I should have been at the game too, and I also should have went food shopping, and I also had the, fo- the, the laundry folded, and I, look, it's all just, it's not happening. <laughs> I'm terrible. I suck, you know? <laughs> uh, and, and so you're carrying around, after, you're war- and you, you're doing all these things, and then you're feeling guilty. Like sometimes I'll try to encourage my mom, and I, I'll say, Mom, you know what? You, you're awesome, and, and you did this, and, and because you, you know, you know I'm, I'm able to do this or that. And she'll, she'll say, you know what? It's amazing. You know what she'll say to me? Oh, I should have done more. <laughs> I should have done better. I just feel like I failed you. <laughs> my brother is a principal of a high school. My other brother is a lieutenant in the fire department, and I'm a pastor of a large church. I think you did okay, Mom. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just a hunch. But there's still all this guilt all over. It's like, what? What is that? Here's what I know. You need to be celebrated because you carry all that stupid guilt. You need to get rid of it. You're doing what you can do. You're doing as much as you can do. You're putting your whole heart into it. And you need some strength. And where's that strength come from? You know where it comes from? It comes from joy. Where's that joy come from? It comes from celebrating. We celebrate you today because you make a difference. My favorite quote about moms is from Abraham Lincoln. He said this, all that I... All that I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. All that I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my mother. When when Abraham Lincoln's mom was taking extra time to discipline him or to teach him to keep his room clean or the value of telling the truth, being honest, do you think that she knew that all of her effort would result in one day having her little boy change a nation? There's no way. There's no way that she knew that. But it did. It happened. Abraham Lincoln became the man that he was, according to his own lips, his own words, because of his mother. Moms, you got to hear this. What you do matters tremendously. I texted my mom this morning before the first service, and uh, I just said to her, <clears throat> Happy Mother's Day. This is 9 o'clock this morning. In a few moments, I'll be speaking to several thousand people. It's pretty amazing, Mom. And it would have never happened without you. 
the seeds that you planted in my heart are blooming and growing. I love you so much. She texted back and said, thank you so much, Danny. I still think it's amazing when I think of all that God is doing through you for his glory. I love you so much. Each night before we would go to sleep as young boys, my, I had two older brothers who were very close in age. She would come into our bedroom and she would kneel by the side of our bed and she would uh, say a few prayers. She would talk to Jesus as if he was right there in the room and, and my little, you know, eight, eight-year-old, nine-year-old brain would kind of just like, okay, so he's here and apparently he's listening. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> You know, and I would begin to understand, like, can you say anything? Can you ask for anything? Like, what is he, you know, how does this work? And she would just, each night, she would come in and pray. And those little seeds of faith that she planted in my heart didn't really blossom until I was about 17 and a half. But I can say, w- without a doubt, without a doubt, all that I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my mother. Specifically because of the line of work that I'm in what I do for for a living. It would have never happened unless she put the idea of God in my heart as a very young boy. Moms, I wanted to celebrate you today because you're awesome. You do unbelievable things and you carry enormous amounts of guilt with you, which you shouldn't. So I was thinking, you know, how can I celebrate you? How could we celebrate you? And I thought the best thing in the world would be chocolate. I mean, I really did think that. I even called my guy. I was like, how much chocolate can we get for like 5,000 people? Uh, you know, and, but then I thought, you know, there'd be some moms would be like, Pastor, I'm on a diet. You're killing me. You know, ridiculous. You know, I'm trying to cut back. And so the whole chocolate thing didn't work out. Then the rose thing, I was going to give you rose, but I thought, roses die. That's stupid. Well, I, don't, I, just, I don't know. So if you wanted a rose, I'm sorry. I just, it would die in a couple of days. What's the point? So, so I thought of something else. So I thought of something else. I've never done this before, but I thought of, uh, of just blessing you, just saying a blessing over your life. And you say, what does that mean? Well, a blessing is, it's not, people, people say when they sneeze, God bless you. We have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I know there's some people that sneeze so hard that they probably need God to bless them. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, oh, Jesus, help that girl, help that guy. I think, but that's not, that's a, Un, a flippant use of the word. We don't, that's not what it means to, you know. A blessing is in, here's what it is, ready? It's, it's projecting goodness into someone's life. It's, and where does that goodness come from? There's only one source. It's from God. So really, it's invoking God's favor upon someone's life. That's what blessing someone is. And you can do that with words, and you can do that with actions, and sometimes you could do that with gifts or whatever. But today I want to do it with words. And there's a, there's a great passage in the book of Numbers that is actually used by many churches each week as the congregation leaves, leaves the auditorium. Uh, but we, we don't have a practice of doing that. But I do want to use it today. And I want to bless you moms in a special way. I want you to, and here's why, because I want you to be filled with his joy because you need strength. You need strength. So here's what I'd like to do. As I bless you, as I read these words over you, I'd like you to stand to your feet. If you're a grandmother, if you're a mother figure in somebody's life, if you're a mother, go ahead and stand to your feet. Go ahead, go ahead. I know this might be a little awkward, but it worked in 915. <laughs> a little bit more confidence. First of all, I want to say, moms, you're awesome. You're just awesome, what you do. Thank you. As I read this blessing, you can close your eyes. You can, you can, you can just say there, just, I, I, here's what I'd like you to do. Just however you want to receive this blessing, you receive it. You can keep your eyes open. You can put your hands out, whatever you want to do. I, I just, I want you to hear these words as if they're coming from God. In Numbers, it says, chapter 6, May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and may the Lord give you his peace. 
as we celebrate you today, may the Lord fill you with his joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength. May the Lord give you his strength to persevere through difficulties because they are many. To be patient through the trials because they are many. May the Lord pour out his love in your heart so that you can bless others. And may the Lord grant you wisdom to guide your children. And may the Lord affirm you and encourage you and fill your life with joy. Because again, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Let me pray for you. Oh God, the influence of a mother, how precious, how powerful, how, how beautiful it is to have a mother shape and mold and be tender and speak and listen and touch and kiss. We praise you. We celebrate mothers today. They are a gift from you. Father, I pray for every single mother, grandmother, mother figure in this room. Father, I pray that you would remove the guilt and the shame that they carry. And you would just fill them with your, with your joy. That you would give them your strength. So that they can be the blessing that you have created them to be in their families and in this world. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. Can we give our moms a hand? The greatest gift that I have given my mother is not being a pastor, although that, she, that thrills her heart. She just thrills her heart, right? So, but the greatest gift that I've ever given my mother is putting my faith in Jesus Christ. Here's why. Here's why. Watch it. Watch it. Ready? It's the decision that will affect all eternity. See, and me and my mom, we're going to be together forever. And if your mom is a person of faith, that's what she wants more for you than anything else in this world. Of course, she wants you to have a good marriage. Of course, she wants you to have a good job and insurance and blah, 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 blah. But if she is a woman of faith, what she wants most for you, listen to me, what she wants most for you is for you to put your faith in Jesus Christ, to have your sins washed away so that you can have eternal life. That's what she wants most, I promise you. I promise you. And some of you have been putting that off and you've been living this way and that way. You said no to God. Listen, maybe today is the day you come back and say, man, I know I need to do that. I know I need to put my faith in Jesus. I know, I, I know I, if I died today, I don't know where I'd go. I, don't, I, don't, I know I want to go to heaven, but I've never made that choice. I've never made that decision. Hey, right now, right now, God would say to you, hey, step in, step in right now. My son is here waiting for you. Reach out to him. Ask him to cleanse you and forgive you of your sins and, and get right with him and receive the gift of eternal life by faith. You can do that in this very moment in your life. In fact, it's what this moment was created for, for some of you. Step into it. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer of faith. And, this, and, and what you're doing is you're, you're reaching out to God in faith and you're asking him to forgive your sins and you're asking him to make you his child so that you could live forever in heaven. If that's you right now, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and bow your head and say this simple prayer of faith. Dear Jesus, I believe in you. I turn to you. I ask you to forgive me. Wash me. Make me your child. I believe you died for me and you paid the penalty for my sin so that I could be forgiven. I trust you. I put my confidence in you. Help me from this day forward to honor you with my life. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, the Bible says that you have become a child of God. 
And our church wants to help you get started on that new journey with Christ. The best way to do that is to begin reading the scriptures. And I know we all want to get out of here real quick because we want to go have lunch with our mothers. I know, I know. Real quick as we close up. Do not miss this. If you just put your faith in Christ, if you're in the balcony down below, there's tables back here to my left and to my right. Go back there. Ask them for a one-year New Testament. Pick it up and begin reading. It's broken down into little five-minute readings according to the date. So today would be May 8th, right? Is that right? May 8th? Yes? Okay. Go to May 8th. We're in the book of John chapter 5 today. I read these same passages every single day, so that'd be cool. Me and you reading the same stuff. Is that cool? A little weird? No? Okay. Whatever. Um, I'm reading these. Great stuff. This is how you grow in your faith. Can we give God glory today for what he's done? Moms, moms, we love you. May the joy of the Lord fill your heart today and may you find strength as you get celebrated on this Mother's Day. Let's pray when we get out of here. Jesus, thank you for our moms. Thank you for those who put their faith in Christ today. Lord, we just love you. Thank you for the opportunity to share, look into your word, to be encouraged, to celebrate, to find joy, and to find strength in you. I hope you were pleased today. I hope you were honored. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Next week, we're going to be part two of Celebrate. You're not going to want to miss it. Bring a friend.